Prime Minister has announced the most drastic limits to our lives. Stay at home and stay at least two metres away from people. The NHS will not be able to cope with the lives. Social distancing has become the new norm. Cafes and shops are vacant. August, they shut down about half the US yeah. economy. Not only are stocks going down, gold is going down, credit's going down. At this point, it's clear that we're going to have a recession that's more severe than the global financial crisis. We are looking at other available options. More and more people are buying and holding Bitcoin. 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 Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Some call this digital gold. Everybody should probably have 1% of their assets in Bitcoin. So for those who are new to the Bitcoin having uh, idea, it's, we used to have 25 Bitcoins as a reward for the miners. It'll be cut in half next year to 12.5 Bitcoins. Is that, is that correct? So when Bitcoin um, first started, um, so when it was first made, Bitcoin was designed to solve a specific problem. It was trying to be a form of money that was not, would not succumb to capture. So it would not be centralized and it couldn't be controlled by some central authority. So every property and everything that happened and every part of Bitcoin came out from that. So we sometimes sort of scratch our heads as to why the founder was anonymous. Well, simply put, Bitcoin wasn't the first attempt at a decentralized and censorship resistant money. Um, but every previous attempt was either shut down and often, in, and in some cases, the founders were actually put into jail. So with that history in mind, it was sort of inevitable that any successful currency would have to have a founder that was anonymous. Similarly, um, the fact that if it, all previous currencies were that attempted to do this were centralized, they were such, shut down because there was one place to shut, turn off a light, turn off a switch. So it had to be decentralized. So similarly, when it, come to, when it comes to monetary policy, we had to work out how to do that in a way where there wouldn't be any form of regulatory capture or there wouldn't any, be any form of moral hazard as well because there was, there's a lot of risk if you have control of money supply. So it had to be decided right at the beginning. And so the decision was made by this group or person, male, female group, to release a certain amount of Bitcoin over time. So with each block, originally 50 Bitcoin were released. And for the first four years, roughly first four years. After that, it reduced to 25 Bitcoin for the next four years. And then we're now in the third phase. So we're in years 10 or 11 or so to 12. And at the moment, it's 12.5 Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin halving is, again, one of the big topics yeah, of 2020. Yeah, sure, sure. Have you heard of the, uh, there's a principle called the self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, yeah. theory. You know how when too many people are, are aware of the news, yeah, yeah, it yeah. may alter the expected outcome? Yes. Do you think the halving will react the way it's been reacting in the past? Or because it's become such a mainstream yeah, topic... Yeah things might change a bit. So I've been talking about on the channel, halving in itself might be a dangerous event because so many people expect it to pump, yeah. which means that there are so many people in the space that are still here. They, they really have lost all the faith <laughs> because you know we've just been dropping from 14K. Uh, and uh, many of them are just here to see, you know, maybe it will pump after the halving. So it's a bit dangerous because if the, many of them will dump uh, if they get disappointed yeah. and they might get disappointed quickly also because there are so many people hyping up the halving. I think there are also some, uh, some bears that might dump into that liquidity. Uh -huh. So, I mean, as always, there is, you know, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. Yeah. So it, it, there's a good chance that the price will increase 
before the halving because people are excited. When the halving happens, that is when the bears start dumping because that, that is when you see so much liquidity to dump into. So if you want to sell a big position, you don't want to sell it now. You want to wait for, for buyers to come. Yeah. for people to form in. Because if, if you, let's say you have a big position and you want to sell it now, you will actually drive down the price. You will get slippage. So you will not be able to sell at current prices. You will sell, sell some Bitcoin at this price and then it will go down. So you will not be able to liquidate. But if uh, many people are buying, then it's perfect. So look, uh, I, I think halving itself is a bit dangerous, but a few months after halving, that's when the exciting that's things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That makes sense, you know, a little bit different from how it's been behaving in the past, yes, like a yes, few yes. months later. Or... And the, also, there is so much more money now that require, that is required to move the prices in the same way. So there's this stock-to-flow model. Yeah. The stock-to-flow model really predicts exponential increase in price after each halving. Previously, it was easier because we went from like $2 to $100, from $100 to 1000 Now we're basically going from thousands to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. And obviously the amount of capital required to go from uh, right now 8K to maybe 50K is way more than to go from like $2 to Absolutely, $10. Yeah. So that's another yeah. factor. Interesting. Uh, but all in all, that's why we are in crypto. It's uncertain and it's also good that it's uncertain because if, once again, if it would be certain, everyone would be in crypto. Everyone and their you know, cousin will already be in crypto. So it's good, it's uncertain. Uh, but look at let, look at the fundamentals. Look at the long term. For me, it's very clear that Bitcoin is going to be huge. Crypto is going to be huge. In the short term, it's all fun. But uh, let's look at the long term at the end of the day. There's a theory called the self-fulfilling or self-defeating prophecy, which says that when too many people of are aware of the same news or future news or future events, it will alter the yeah. actual expected outcomes. Yes. So are you a little bit worried about that? About, you know, the, or do you still believe the happening is, is going, or the having is going to moon, as we say? I'm, or? I'm, I'm not worried at all, because in the long run, you actually have a linear regression line going through it. And however, we can get, we can get front run, yeah, and the price just dumps before the halving we get, or, or maybe it's coming afterwards. I mean, usually we already know that the halvings will end in 2100 in the year 2130 so in a perfect efficient market that should already be priced in right and it is not so in the long run the price of bitcoin will just follow its fundamentals and what's happening now if we are going to pump tomorrow next month after the halving before the halving if you are here for the long run if you are here for the fundamentals and what bitcoin is actually meant for then all of this stuff doesn't matter so if someone wants to take any advice, maybe dollar cost averaging is better than trying to outperform the market in that way. Yeah, but what's really interesting is if you take the stock to flow ratio and map the price of Bitcoin to that stock to flow ratio over the last, and now we have 10 years of data, the correlation is striking. It's, it's, it's insane. Um, so what this tells you is that although there are many other things that affect the price, when you think about it in the long term, the stock to flow ratio seems to have an incredible correlation. Now, really, this theory has only come out in the last six to eight months or so. So we really need to see how it operates for another few years to be sure. But it is really striking. Um, and if that's the case, next year with the stock to flow ratio du um, um, doubling, we'd expect the market cap to move towards close to that of gold. Now, silver's market cap is currently about 300 billion. Gold's is 8 trillion. So that's why many people believe with the next halving, the correct price of Bitcoin will tend towards the well over 1 trillion mark, which could lead to a price of Bitcoin of well over 60,000 US dollars for Bitcoin. Now, there'll be a lot of volatility around that, but there's a lot of excitement for that. Do you believe in this happening this year or does it worry you that everyone knows it, CNBC, every single media outlet is promoting it? So I think that this, this run up to 14,000 that we got, that was this premature hype, this front running and this correction that happened after um, was the um, consequence or the reaction to this, um, this overhype. So I think that we have already seen the, the having being prematurely priced in and also now corrected. So I think that 2020, I mean, the having will be the biggest story for sure. It is such a huge thing to see the supply, the newly created supply get cut in half, uh, the stock to flow. And uh, I think that this will further create more and more attention towards Bitcoin as a form of money. 
be, and make more people aware of this inflation schedule that will eventually reach zero. Like I said, this is the first time in history we've seen something have absolute scarcity. Nothing else in the world has 0% inflation. It's not possible except in the digital world. So it is the first time we've seen something being digitally scarce, absolutely scarce, and the having will, will put more attention to this fact.